Hey guys, thanks for checking out this week's message. At Hope City, we're always so encouraged to hear how God is bringing the hope of Jesus to people through this ministry. If God has used this ministry to bring hope to your life, we'd love to hear about it. To share your story, you can email us at lifechange at hopecityonline.net. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry financially, you can simply text any amount to the number on the screen. It's a safe and secure way to support the work God is doing here at Hope City. Now, let's prepare our hearts for a message of God's Word. We are continuing a series of conversations that we started last week called Unique. Not the makeup brand, but your makeup. Like legitimately how God has uniquely wired you and made you. Specifically this morning, we're going to talk about how God has uniquely wired and made us as a body of believers. Us as the body of Christ. Us as Hope City Church. And to to carry on that conversation, um, I've invited a buddy of mine. And I've been begging him for like months now to come and hang with us and to share with us. um, Because he had mentioned to me earlier on that he wanted to come and encourage our church. He wanted to be able to bless our church. And so we've been trying to get schedules right and trying to make it work. And um, he has obviously uh, things to do on Sunday mornings. But this morning we're going to hear from a dear, dear friend of mine, somebody that I look up to and respect in unbelievable ways. His name is Andy Williamson. And Andy is the lead pastor at Factory Church, which meets just down the road in Concord. Um, They meet at a CrossFit gym. So that's something that we'll never do, just so you know. In the name of Jesus, I I don't darken the doors of those places. They freak me out. They scare me. I spent a year and a half doing CrossFit, and I'm scarred for life. And so I'll never go back to one. The only time I'm come, Andy, the only time I come to a CrossFit gym is when you invite me to come and hang out with you. I had the privilege of doing that um, last week. Let me tell you why I've got a huge amount of respect for, for Andy and the team over at Factory. Because a lot of guys do church planting or start a church or go into ministry or, 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 or do vocational church leadership because they don't really know of anything else that they could, would, or should do, right? They're like, I believe in the Lord, I believe in who He is, I believe in what He's doing in me and what He's doing in my family, and I wanna help other people experience that, so I'm just gonna dedicate my life to that, and that's pretty much the extent of a lot of people's calling. But Andy has a little bit of a different story. Andy is from uh, Miami, Florida, and started a, uh, yeah, we got a few Floridians here, uh, started a design firm in Miami, ended up moving that design firm to the Charlotte, North Carolina area, um, very successful design firm. And the reality is because of what God has led him to in the marketplace and in business, he didn't need to start a church. It wasn't like he needed personal fulfillment in life, so he needed to go and start a church. It wasn't like he needed the money, not that there's a lot of money in church planting, so he started a church. It wasn't like his schedule wasn't full enough, and so he needed to start a church. He started a church not because Charlotte, North Carolina needed another church, but because Charlotte needed a different kind of church. And Andy was absolutely convinced that God was calling him, that God was asking him, that God was prompting his heart to start something that other people had not yet had the opportunity to experience. And so I could not be more thrilled or more excited because what Andy and the team are doing at Factory is very similar to what we are doing at Hope City. And that is we're believing that God is calling us to a unique and special calling to have an influence and a voice in our city which reshapes the spiritual landscape around us and because of that I couldn't be more thrilled to call him friend we are co-laborers for Christ in this city and I want him to come and love on you and encourage you for just a little bit so listen here's the deal here's the deal I want you to do me a favor and not shame me because I told him we had a rowdy crowd at Hope City so I want you to live up to your name I want you to do me a favor and make some Hope City style noise for my friend and pastor of Factory Church Andy Williamson can you guys give it up for Andy Come on, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Is that good? Is that good enough? Is that it's, it's very good, very good. <laughs> okay. It's all you, bro. Uh, so I got to start off with your pastor is a liar. I did not ask to come do this. Because I'm not very good at this. Your pastor is much better, much better at this than I am. But I'll tell you what, what, uh, what he's done for me, your pastor has done for me, is he's, he's been my friend, and I think that's the closest thing you can be to Jesus. So the, the crazy thing that you guys have going on here is the fact that as I'm, as I'm coming over here, we had a service this morning our, our, uh, at 9.30 um, this morning, and, and, uh, and, and God did something really neat and encouraged me in a, in a great way there in that service. The whole morning I've been thinking about you guys. And as I was driving over here, and I'm coming through this incredible city, 
University City, do you understand that you exist for a very, very big reason? So the fun thing with this is church is weird. Sometimes it's a little scary too, right? And sometimes you don't know how to exist in it. Sometimes you don't know how to, to, to do whatever it is that we're doing here with church. And sometimes uh, uh, church is really interesting because it's the melting pot of all kind of people, which is the recipe of crazy. <laughs> so that thing just fell off, so I'm gonna move to this thing. Sorry, you good with this? Okay, now bear with me. All right, so church can be a little crazy. People are crazy, and since they're crazy, uh, things, things happen, but I wanna, I wanna bring you through something. First, I wanna throw this one passage up, the first one um, up on, on the screen. The first passage, Amanda, throw that first passage up on the screen uh, for me for a second. So I want you guys to make sure you operate in this. So I will praise you, look at that screen, I will praise you for I am what? And wonderfully made. So, so if you are fearfully and wonderfully made, then there's a creator that's saying this, right? So you gotta operate in this. Before we can get going, this is your baseline. He did not create you for average. He did not create you to bring you somewhere in a life, some kind of challenge that you're facing today. He did not bring you there to leave you there. Own it. See, because if you don't own this, if you don't own the fact that he made you with purpose and he made you with cause, then you're gonna miss out on the blessing that he is bringing towards you. Own it. See, because you can't move forward. You can't move forward without knowing that the God Almighty, the one that you've been singing to tonight, today, the one that you've been singing to, that one, you cannot move forward if you don't believe that he made you perfectly, uniquely, you. Your shape, your size, your background. If you lose this, you don't gain where he wants to take you. And so then, man, I throw that next passage up. And if you look at this, it says, it says the thief comes to, to, to steal, right? But you know this verse. A church like this knows this verse. It says, that, but I have come that they may have what? Life, right? Say life. All right, so when Jesus speaks, you can take that and move with it. But if you, if you don't take his word and activate his word, then you're going to camp out in the season that you're going to be in. So when he is saying that, that I came to give you life and that you may have it more what? Not average. Not kind of. Not hope to get by tonight. Some of us struggle at times with just trying to make that cell phone bill. Some of us struggle at times to figure out how to put our kids through school. Some of us in here are struggling with the, the identity of who I'm going to be in this world. Some of you are struggling at times with the challenge of, of what do I do to make a difference? And these are real. But see, there is something fun that happened. There's a time in, in, in history when Jesus is coming across the, the, the Mount of Olives, and as he's coming across the Mount of Olives, and he's looking down into to Jerusalem. And as he's looking down into Jerusalem, he sees, he sees something, and we're going to celebrate this here in the next week or so, and I'm not going to ruin your pastor's uh, Easter message here, so I'm just going to quickly go through this. But you have to have a baseline for this. I am wonderfully made, period. And there is a Savior that came to give me an abundant life. But if you don't operate in that abundance, then you're going to have what you can through the natural. And he's called you to be supernaturally natural, not natural in your own realm. So as he's looking down, he's filled with emotion. It's crazy because there's people lining the streets waiting for him to come down. And they're throwing coats down. And he's, he's riding in, as we know, of Palm Sunday. Amen? And so as he's coming down, he's moving. And as he's moving down there, the place is going nuts. And guess who is making deals left and right? Boys, well, disciples are. Because when your boy is doing something crazy, you want to roll with that. You want to have fun with that. These are human beings. They didn't float on, on, on clouds. Understand this. These are humans that are seeing something incredibly powerful. And people are crying out to him. And the emotion and the, and the level of intensity is, is huge. And they're moving and they're seeing this. And the people that are crying for him are asking for one thing. And it's not for them to save him. They want him to overthrow the government that's oppressing them. 
So there's a need that they have. It's the wrong need that they're focusing on, but they see somebody that is creating a revolution. And they're trying to figure out if he is going to do what they need to happen right now. So be it. So they saw, he starts to roll down and through the crowd. And as he moves, he's going through the crowd. And as he, as he gets down there, the religious hate him. Because what happens in religion is religion has to be there in order to control you, not to set you free. See, religion wants to tell you what you are supposed to do, not introduce you to the one that has covered it all. Religion is the thing that you have grown up in and try to figure out how you can find a God that is so big and so real because he seems so distant. And then what it tells you are the five to ten things you got to do and you still feel empty inside. It leaves you empty. So the religious came to him and started to, 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 to try to shush the whole thing up. And as you know, many of you know, what happened is all of a sudden he, he just smiled at them and said, listen, let me tell you something. If I stop them, these rocks are going to go crazy. So the power of the Spirit was flowing all through that side of that mountain. Couldn't be stopped. And so now all of a sudden, he starts to prepare for a feast that's going to happen. We've got a feast of Passover that's going to happen. And he sends his two disciples down there. And, they, and he says, listen, I need you to prepare for this feast. They have the Last Supper. And we know what happens on that. And then he moves up into the Garden of Gethsemane. So I have to give you this background because you have to understand the flow. They're on a high. So as these disciples are on a super high because they're coming off this thing and they're saying, did you just see what happened? And guess what? Nothing's better than traveling with the one that made it happen. Nothing's better, right? You're traveling with the one that made it happen. And what you're saying right now is this is incredible. And you're with him. You're one of him. So everybody that's trying to get to him are going through you. That's how it works. They're going through them. They're trying to connect with Jesus. They're doing it for whatever reason that they need. They're trying to do it. So watch this. As he gets up to the Garden of Gethsemane and things started to happen, we know that Judas betrayed him. And then all of a sudden we see this in, 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 in Scripture as we know that the, 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 the priest, the high priest, and, and, and sent the guards over. And, and there was a soldier named Malchus. And, and, and Peter rises up and he cuts his ear off. So Jesus puts that thing back on his head and says, we're not fighting. We're not fighting. Don't do this. So all of a sudden, they were faced with a challenge. The world, in a matter of minutes, is now starting to unravel what is going on. And so as the soldiers go and take him by force, they take him by force, and they take Jesus by force, and all of a sudden they separate. And just chapters before that, we, we, we see that, that, that Peter was talking to Jesus, and Jesus said to him, hey, I'm going to tell you a time period where you are going to deny me three times. And Peter says it's impossible. And we know this, that if we are faced with denying Jesus right now, we would say it won't happen. Do you want me to tell you why we would say that? Because who's signing up to deny him right now? But life happens. And choices happen. So the world starts to crumble. He gets ripped off the side of that, that hill. And he gets put in front and you know the story, we're going to celebrate it in another week, and then we're going to celebrate. The cross was fun, but the, the reason I'm standing here is because the grave got, got exploded. So he gets put on the, gra on, the, on the cross, right? Did we see what happened to him in our visual? Our mind's eye sees what's happened to him. He's up there, he's naked, he's, he's beaten. They took clubs and they smashed him. They, they took, they took a thorns and they, they smashed him in his head and they ripped his beard off. I mean, it was brutal. So where are the cast of characters, his disciples? I think it's in John 21. You might have made to have that passage. All of a sudden in John 21, here's what happens. He gets crucified and the world starts to end. And where do we find his closest? Back in Galilee, just a day later. A day later, hours later, back to their old lives fishing. What are we talking about? Wait, wait, you talk, wait, this is over? Wait, hold on. So why are they back to their old lives miles and miles away? A huge journey. Days later, why are they back to their old lives? Why? They don't want to be tied up with this. The name of Jesus in Jerusalem right now is taboo. They don't want to be tied up in this. In fact, if they killed him, the one that had all of it, what are they going to do to him, to, to each other? 
think they're standing in line, so we know they're not standing in line, and there was no ministry. There's zero ministry work. There's no ministry work. What happened is all of a sudden they go into hiding. There's nothing. The, the cross killed everything. There's no reason to, to, there's no ministry. There's none of this. There's no Hope City. There's no factory church. There's no, none of this. Because what's it worth? So what changed? So there's a man that traveled a couple days later. He was tied up for three days. And he starts to travel. And what Jesus does is he goes to them. He starts to pursue them. And he sits on, on the, the shore and he starts to, to make food for them. And he just calls out to them and says, hey, come here. And their lives exploded forever. So the challenge that we have is the same challenge that they faced. Because the challenge of unbelief was very real in their lives. And there's no reason we sit here today if they just told a great story about a human, a human that was just good to people. There's no reason for this. No reason to even show up for this. This is far from a good human that just loved on others. There's no reason for it. Check this out. So we see in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 1 actually, uh, he, he, we see that he ascends up to heaven and he tells them to get into Jerusalem. I'm about to send you the spirit that, that, that is going to change your life forever. Could you just imagine the conversation? Guys, hold on for a second, all right? So we're watching this whole deal and all of a sudden he, he, he's, on, he's on earth for 40 days and we know this, there's, there's hundreds that saw him. So the account of why you are sitting here right now, it's not because one person just wrote a neat thing in a, in a, in a script and we have this Bible. It's, it has nothing to do with that. What it is is because there was hundreds and hundreds that saw him and they could not stop what happened. They could not stop. The, the, the stories kept moving and then the power of the Holy Spirit was necessary. See, because what happened is he just starts to go up to heaven. I mean, what's the conversation after that? He's up in heaven they, and Jesus says, hey, remember the room that we were just at? Go down there. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like you're walking back with your friends and you're like, man, so this is good. So I guess we're doing this. It's cool. So there goes Jesus. Um, uh, so we, uh, so Peter, didn't you just deny, don't talk to me. Hey, weren't you two just down there like fishing stuff? Like you don't believe in this. Like what is happening? Life is crazy. So now we get to Acts chapter two. When we get to Acts chapter 2, fun starts to happen. And the Spirit starts to come upon them. And then we see the man that denied him three times filled with the Holy Ghost and start to speak unlike any time before. And then they get out and get going. Because God is a God of motion. And if you're camping out in life right now and not moving and not seeing God move upon your life, it is because you are making that decision. And so all of a sudden he sent them and they left. And the story goes, I believe we're in, in Acts 3 or so now, the story goes that all of a sudden Peter and John start to head down to the temple. And as they're heading down to the temple, um, here we go. And then as they go to the temple and as they're, they're heading down to the temple, there's, I love this part right here. It says, in the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. So there's a few things you need to know with that. You can keep this up on the screen for a second. First off, we have a beggar. Let's just put our mind's eye inside the life of a beggar. Uh, pretty good deal. So it's really fun, right, when you're laying on the ground and you're begging because you're lame, you can't walk. And we see later in this passage, he's 40 years old. He's been lame for his whole life and he can't walk. So his daily routine, because it says they carried him daily, his daily routine is somebody is picking him up and dropping him off right there because he's got to get the, the, he's got to get the funds he needs because guess where he's going to be tomorrow? Back there. What a life, right? So what happens when somebody's walking by him and, and, and they, they look down at him? What happens when they, they make fun of him? What happens when, 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 when they look at him and, and they, 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 they just dismiss him? So the challenge in life is this, is that you think that you have challenges and giants in your life. We've been facing them for thousands of years. But the problem is, is that we keep looking at the challenges in our own life and we do just what this lame man just did, is he just looks forward to what he can do, which is each day, let me eke it out and get back there to the gate. Each day, I'm gonna eke this thing out. 
So he's sitting there at the gate. And if you put that passage back up, he's sitting there at the gate. And then all of a sudden, what starts to happen is Peter and John starts to come up there. And it says to, to ask alms in the temple. Who's seen, so first he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple and he asked for alms. Go to the next one. And then as he asked for alms, it says in fixing his eyes on him. But John and Peter said this, so they see this man. Keep this passage up for a second. They see him, but now what I love about this, and it says, uh, says in verse 5, so he gave them his attention because he said to them, hey, look at me, hey. Why isn't that beggar looking at him? Because when you beg for something, you don't put your eyes up on somebody. I don't know if we're allowed to say this, but it sucks. It sucks. It's, it's, it's tough. So first, this beggar is looking at him, but then as they get close, they, he puts his eyes down. Why does he put his eyes down? Because he's pulling guilt behind him. He's pulling baggage. That he, It's tough. It's not easy. So all of a sudden, when Peter and John started to look at him, and Peter says, hey, look at me. So now, what do you do as a beggar? All of a sudden, the emotions start just pushing through your whole body. Somebody's talking to me. Because you know how many hundreds of people passed him without even saying hello? Without even loving on him? Hundreds, thousands, daily. So all of a sudden, he looks down at him and says, listen, silver and gold, I don't have any. Now, if you're a beggar, that's not the word you want. <laughs> right? Hey, I'm praying for you. That's good. Thank you. Could you come back with a few coins? That would help. There's a need. So as this need is real, here's where it comes back to us. You are not going to get away from needs. If you think you're going to get away from a challenge, you're, you're mistaken. That's called life. But the beauty of what happens is God through you and his glory gets glorified when he operates in you and overcomes your challenge. But you have to allow, allow him to do so. So he says, hey, listen, give me your hand. Give me your hand right here. And it says, uh, it says silver, and dollar, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because let's make sure we are extremely clear on why we are here. So I'm going to say a name that just 50 days ago you just killed just a, a quarter mile from here inside the holy city. It says, by, by Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm going to take your hand. I'm going to tell you to rise up and walk. And if you know the story, he took him by the right hand. And he lifted him up, and immediately, the thing that I love about what God does is when he overcomes, he doesn't challenge you and lay, let you lay in your filth because 40 years this man couldn't walk. But why does he immediately get up? And it says his feet and ankle bones receive strength immediately. And he didn't just get, get standing up. Go to the next passage. He didn't get to stand up. It said he stood up, and he was leaping, and I think there was a bit of dancing going on. Amen? The power that overcame him would have left himself on that ground and would not have been active if he didn't give him his hand. See, because faith takes action. And each one of you are built with extreme purpose. But if you're camping and wherever you're camping today, God is moving and he's asking you to go. So all of a sudden, he jumps up and he starts to say, guess where I'm going? I'm going into the temple that they wouldn't allow me to go to because I've been lame my whole life. I'm going to take a peek at this deal. So as he gets into that temple, because he's been, he's been religiously condemned, he gets into the temple, and he starts dancing and leaping, and it says that he grabbed hold of Peter and, and, and didn't let him go. And it says that as they were there and they were moving, it says that, that all the people inside the temple started to flock over to him. Can you feel the emotion? The power. And so as this starts to happen, they were filled with wonder, it says. It says they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So go forward here. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's porch, and they were greatly what? So now we have an issue. And so when Peter saw it, all of a sudden Peter started to, to say, well, hold, hold on, wait, 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 you think this is, this isn't the first time this has happened. So Peter saw it and he responds to the people and he says, hey, listen, men of Israel, look, why do you marvel at this or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let me make sure we tell you what was happening here. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that, 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 that has sent his son Jesus and it came to pass in the next day that the, the rulers and elders and scribes as well as with the high priest 
etc. I think we went too far. She's messed me up, and Amanda's trying to say, I'm me back in. I love you, man. Here's the deal. That's my notes. I screwed up. Watch this. What ended up happening is this. We don't need any notes. Watch this. What he ended up doing is he started to tell them on the power of who, on the substance of where my substance came from, came from the power of Jesus. And I'll tell you what, your life will fall short until you pull upon his substance. Your natural can't be good enough. What you have and what you try to overcome on your natural will hold you up. When you start to look at what you can do to overcome what is struggling and the giant that you are facing, when you try to do this on your own, you are going to fall short. You are going to create frustrations in your own life. Life, and what he did is he picked him up. He starts dancing and moving. And he says, hey, that same Jesus that you, you just denied and put, a, put, put a, 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 a thief, a robber, a, a wretched man, you set him free, but you put Jesus on, on, on the cross. By that name is the reason why this man dances tonight. Now, this is when it gets fun to me. So all of a sudden, the, 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 the religious leaders, they see this, right? And they get real fired up and agitated. So they go over and they start to, to grab them. They start to grab them and they start to, to, uh, to, to pull them aside and they did it in a very nice way because we got to teach you how to do this church thing and you're in here right now, like what is going on? And we got to stop this from happening. So the story goes on and it says that they put them into prison. They put uh, Peter and John into prison and it's, and it's funny because they, they put to, uh, Peter and John into prison and they, they, they hold them there overnight. The next morning, I don't know if you can find that, Amanda. My notes might be all messed up, but the next morning it might be chapter four. Yeah, go to chapter four. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadduc Sadducees and Pharisees, they, 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 Peter starts to, 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 to testify on the, the power of God. And here's what I thought was awesome. Keep going. And it says this. However, many of those who heard and believed, a number of men came to start to know Jesus in the church, just like Hope City Church started to grow, started to move. Because the need was very real, and all of a sudden there was a Savior that started to move. But I have to remind you of this. Those men just a couple days ago were over down in Galilee fishing back to their old life. If they didn't see the answer, there was no reason to stand up there and testify like they were doing. Because just a few days ago, they killed the Savior of the world. What is stopping them from doing it to them today? That's why you're sitting here today. And then it says this. And as many as were there in the family of the high priest were, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the, in the midst of them, if you keep on going here, this is where it gets fun for me. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the, of the people, the, uh, of elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of who? Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead by him, this man stands be before you. And what he was trying to say is this, hey, the one that you crucified, who God raised from the dead, I know because I just seen him a couple days ago. And I walked with him a couple days ago. That, by that name, is the reason that this man dances. And it says in verse 9, that if we this day are judged for a good deed, then do it. Judge me. So, so go on, Amanda, go on to the next passage here. And it says this. Look at what it says right here when it says, it's given among men which we must be, be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. So we're going to stop here for a second. So are you waiting for God to use you? Like, why? Because you're not good at this? Because, like, you don't have a lot to offer? Because you didn't finish school? Because you're just a mom and that's what you do. You're just a mom. You're just a dad. That's what you do. That's what you are. But you're asking God to move on your behalf, but you're just that. And you can't be used because you don't do things like this. You don't hold microphones. You don't, you don't do things like this. Untrained and uneducated men. It's pretty awesome how God uses the unqualified, right? Hope City, please understand this. You were placed in a very special part of town for an absolute reason. If you think that this was a mistake, you're, you are absolutely wrong. You, you, you are not right if you, if you think that. If you think that you were here by accident today, you're absolutely wrong. Untrained and unqualified, and they were blown away. And why were they blown away? They were blown away because they knew that they just seen Jesus. They heard that this man was back moving across this, this, uh, this earth. And why were they mad? because their whole power was crumbling right in front of them. Because religion wants to entrap you. 
And so all of a sudden they bring him back the next day. And this is what <laughs> blew me away. And uh, go to the next uh, passage here. I'm gonna find this one verse. When they heard fur further, they threatened them. Before this happened, I found out in this passage that it wasn't just the two of them that were in jail. They start to testify on behalf of that, that, that beggar, but they don't call him a lame beggar anymore. They start to call him the man. But isn't that what Jesus does? Is when he heals you and he overcomes what you are facing, you are no longer what the world told you you were yesterday. You are no longer operating in a bondage and chains that you were dealing with an hour ago because he calls you as called, as chosen, as beautiful, as worthy, as powerful. That's what he calls you. And so all of a sudden it says that the three of them were in jail. Could you imagine that party up in jail? Could you imagine what was going on in jail? There's no jail lie that could, com could contain those three. Are you kidding me? We just saw the Jesus of Nazareth raised from the dead. Not only that, he pours his power inside us in chapter 2. And now all of a sudden we start operating in chapter 3 and there's, there's, he starts to heal somebody that was broken and left for nothing. And so I end with this. You have a choice. Have him play something. We're going to do something here in a second. Preacher, give me a couple of your guys. Come up here. Come here. Pass these out. One to everybody. These are silver and gold dollars. Everyone leaves with this. Give me somebody else to help me here. Pass these out. Make sure everyone gets one. They could keep them, absolutely. If there's more, come up here and we'll give them to you. All the lame, lame beggar at that point in time was trying to do is get one of these. That's all he's trying to do. He's just trying to get one of these. A piece of gold or silver. Get one of these. And guess what he was going to do the next day? The next day, he was just coming back because he can eke it out. He was just trying to eke it out. But what God wanted to do was powerfully fill him to over and abundantly give him power upon his life that is so much greater than eking it out. So each of you had this gold and silver. There's gold and silver uh, dollars in there. Make sure there was. Understand this that if that lame man just held his cup up and said, hey, I'm good. I've heard of people like you. I need this that's inside your hand. What would he have lost? The miracle and the power upon his life. And do you think that he was a stoppable force after that? Ain't nobody stopping him. Nobody was getting in his way. Nobody was going to take what God had done for him. So as you hold that coin in your hand, you have a choice. Are you going to move with expectation because you were fearfully and wonderfully made with purpose? Or are you going to camp in the season that you're at? If you believe that you're here today and this, this church here today is, is just, just going through the motions, you're wrong. You're wrong. The untrained and unqualified, I can raise my hand to it. Because the insecurities that I have, I'm not very good at this, and the insecurities that I have when I get up on stage and I, and I teach these things, the insecurities that I have is the fact that I, at times, pull guilt behind me. And I pull baggage behind me. And I'm challenged because the challenges are real in my own life, just even financially, the challenges are real in my own life. And I've got two kids, I've got a nine-year-old son and a 14-year-old daughter, and what am I going to do with them? And so I'm no different than you. But what I am is this, is as small that I am on this earth, I will move forward and I'll put down my cup because that's what a beggar does. And I will reach my hand out to the almighty savior that is sowing into you, to you, to you, moving on your behalf, moving on you, wanting to have an abundant life in you, through you, Want to do something special in you? 
wanting to challenge you to, to move with expectation, wanting to tell you to be great, wanting to tell you to operate in your calling, which is wonderful, wanting to tell you to, to, to move, but Andy, I don't have, I don't have the ability, that's fine, either to the beggar, but all of a sudden he started to dance. Jesus, I pray over Hope City Church that you will never be the same. Because as that beggar stood up and he started to dance, he was never the same. And neither are you. Bow with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this. And I pray for this pastor because he has power upon his life. But he's faced with his own challenges. Each one of these people in here are faced with some kind of giant facing them. But you have overcome this. So there's also somebody in this room right now that says, Andy, I don't know this Jesus you speak about. I've been chained up in this. And I want this. So I'm going to teach you something right now. You can pray with me. God, I need you. Help me. And if you say this, God, I need your son, Jesus. Not the one that I've been taught that condemns, but the one that came and gave me life. I need that. God, I receive your son, Jesus, and, and I, I, I need him in my life. And I don't know how to do this religion thing. How to do this, but I will tell you this I will lay my life down so you can fill it and be more abundant. Lord, I'm asking you right now to be real in my life. And as heads are bowed, ain't nobody looking around. I just want to know how to pray for you. If you would look up and just put your hand up, no one's gonna, gonna make you look weird or anything right now. I want to know how to pray for you. Is there anybody in here that says, Lord, free me? Free me. I see it. Yes, ma'am. One, two, yes, three. Free me. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. God, in the name of Jesus, you have called both myself and everyone in this room because I am no different. I'm average. I'm just like them. But you have called us to a power that's greater than who we are. And Lord, I pray that you explode upon this city in the, the miracle of what is this church. And I thank you for doing what you're doing in this room right now. Thank you for this church being an encouragement to our church. Thank you for them leading and guiding in ways that I need to know. Because we don't know what we're doing. We're up there in Concord doing our own thing. But we were of the same team and of the same mind. And we believe, God, that you have sent your son Jesus to be powerful inside our lives. And today, we are not laying down. We are getting up and we are moving. Because that power is inside.
everything that they told us we can't do. That's the stuff I write down so I know what to do. There's no rules to this. There's just a savior. Move 